Hello everybody, my name is David, but you can call me Rev, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV and Walk. The previous episode, everything arrived. After doing some busy work with Alvin and Isaiah, everything arrived, everybody's together, everybody's happy, everyone's motivated, and I am excited to continue playing. So let's go on ahead and talk to Alphano and see what we need to do next. We finally managed to clear the harbor, which means the rest is in the engineer's capable hand. Meanwhile, Father's issued us an invitation. As we agreed, he will reveal the name means by which Hyladin may be contacted. We meet him in Aporia when he's ready. Given the vile knowledge she holds, I suggest we leave without delay. It, trans it transpires, however, that the form's method for speaking with her is not without risk. I'm curious to hear what those might entail, but regardless, be warned. Most of those who arrived with the Adamantite have offered to stay and see to any remaining tasks that might need doing. The form has already asked for my assistance in overseeing the process, so you wouldn't need to worry about anything. Thank you, Tatoru. We're off to Aporia then. So we're heading down even lower. How big is Labyrinth, those you know? Oh, we're here now. From here, we are to proceed to the heart of Labyrinthos and its most closely guarded secret, Thal Thalmazen. It marks the beginning of the ends of our efforts, whence we delve to seek audience with the star, and whence we will embark on a journey to the heavens. Sway, if you please. But how big is the ship? Because we can only fit so many people, I'd imagine. They've been working on this for many, many years. Looks like it can fit a good amount. But yeah, definitely multiple trips. Oh, wait. Yeah, that looks like the size of like the Normandy in Mass Effect. I bid you welcome to Thalmazen. Direct your attention towards the center to behold the arc over which we have long labored. As you can see, it was designed as a medium-sized craft, the better to reduce fuel consumption. Mini miniaturizing magics have been applied to its interior to ensure that the thrust-to-weight ratio does not place too great a limitation on its freight capacity. The aether burner, as you know, has been removed for further modification, but will reattach it soon enough. I have received word that Coco and several of your allies are working on it with intense fervor. They are sure to see it done, close by their expertise that many a prior disaster was averted. If anything, I fear they will not afford us much time for speaking with Heidelin ere they finish. Point taken. Let's move on. I must warn you again, however, that even with the benefit of our device, to treat with her is not a simple feat. What? I'm, I'm trying to understand what he means by it. Find that, like, I just find it very odd that he specifies that it's difficult to talk to. Him. I have done what I can to impress upon you the gravity of what lies ahead. Prepared. Make for the lift at the center of this chamber. Come. As you all know, alongside our physical world exists an ethereal plane, what we refer to as the ethereal sea. At the heart of the star, the physical and ethereal are one and the same. Thus, the deeper we go, the easier it becomes the pass between said plane. Utilize this principle in constructing the Annie Tower, and once more in Thalmazen. No sooner did the Forum decide to withdraw from Eorza than we began to work on this facility. Our work culminated in a device that allowed us to peer deeper into the ethereal sea than ever before, in search of Hydaelyn's ever fainter echoes. The um, Iteoscope. And you communicate with her through this device. For a time, yes, but since the seventh umbral calamity, it's been rare to even hear a whisper. If you wish to reach her, you must journey closer to the center of the star than we have ever dared, beyond the Ateoscope. Even so, I make gar no guarantee that you'll find her, nor of your safety, not so deep in the ethereal sea. You understand, but if you are to, to deliver this world, we have no choice but to try. I think they should only just send me. I know. I only wish we could do m more than observe your progress from afar. The Ateoscope's ocular lens, by which we may peer into the ethereal sea without 
placing ourselves at hazard lies above us. The road we can watch and guide you. In those swirling depths, there are pockets of ether so dense and turbulent that they can unravel one's soul. If we determine that you are at risk of coming into contact with such a pocket, we will recall you with teleportation magic. To that end, it would be best if one familiar with the composition of your souls remained here to assist in asserting said risk. Otherwise, there is an increased probability that we will extract you too early or too late. So that means Graha, right? Oh, please allow me. I have thought upon this much, and in truth, do not believe I am fit to join you in the trials ahead. The events at the Tower of Babel have drained me, yes, but even before that, your capabilities far outstripped my own. There is no time to have a weak leak in, in our vanguard, no matter how much she may wish it were otherwise. If I assist in the manner that Master Fortuno has laid out, however, I may still be of use. Do you trust me in doing so? I can think of none I trust more, compared to all the effort you put into keeping us alive while our souls were in the first, preventing us from dissolving into ether on a single expedition ought to pose no challenge at all. And even if we did, I expect you would hunt us down to restore us to health somehow. You flatter me. The rest assured, I'll be keeping a close eye on all of you. There is one more thing. Though in ages past referred to the Ethereal Sea as the Underworld, our final resting place. It in its embrace, his memories washed away, leaving only the purity of one's soul, so we believe. Yet what of these memories? You think to ask what became of them, cast adrift on the ethereal tide. Some theorize they linger for some time, those associated with strong sentiment in particular. So we might be able to see Banat's memories, maybe? In those depths, memories of the departed may even coalesce around you for hatred or for love. Thus I do you caution to be wary, but also to have faith. Remember those who gladly extend a hand to you. And they may lift you up once more. Is this a dungeon? This is a dungeon. I wouldn't have expected this to be a dungeon. Okay. That changes how I decide to approach things, I guess. We're going to do what we did for... um the other dungeon before this one where the, the dungeon's probably going to take up the bulk of this episode and then the aftermath will be the fall. So, how do we get this small talk start all started? And now I understand why these facilities are so heavily guarded. It fell into the wrong hands. The wisdom of Heidelin can be dangerous. It's true. However, that danger is not compared to what would result should the common folk and mass venture to the ethereal sea unprepared, which they most certainly would. If they thought it would allow, which they most certainly would if they had thought it would allow them to speak to the dead. Once that secret got out, no rational argument could dissuade people from wanting to see their loved ones, no matter how ephemeral the meeting. We have always tried to do the right thing, but we have not always been kind nor merciful. I should not be surprised if some few harbored resentment for us as they passed on. We must face these truths and meet them as they come. Maybe our enemies are down there, but if we've beaten them once, we can beat them again. I'm more concerned about our meeting with Heidelin. may find out truth, but what if... No. I'd rather not think on it. Let's move on. If some part of them remains in the Ethereal Sea, do you think... Forgive me. Not why we're here. No matter what happens, she'll always be with us. With Reen, most of all. She tells us to live for the here and now. To do what must be done, and we will. I cannot help but think of those who are transformed into beasts. Their hate are dissolved into nothingness. Their souls forever lost. Yet I dare say Fandaniel still wanders the Ethereal Sea, as do agents who gave rise to Zodiac, setting in motion so many cataclysmic events. If there is a justice or morality at work that governs our fates, I do not know it, nor do I think any man ever will. Vitalin be unwilling or unable to divulge Medion's location, I shall see our comrades deliver to the moon, one and all. I pray, however, that this eventuality did not come to pass, while even a sliver of hope remaining must fight on. I've seen more than enough death in my time. Friends, enemies, far to make account. Was revenge was all I lived for. All that hate, all that anger. What good did it do? None. That's what. May I see it? There's no point in living for the past. It's the present that needs protection. All right. I think I know exactly what what our party's gonna end up looking like. Alphano and Isaiah are coming for sure. And. Honestly, the third the third person's genuinely been up for grabs. 
unfortunately, we haven't had a moment where uh, we, we bring either Orianje or Thancred, unfortunately, just because I've been a tank and just haven't had a proper moment to bring Orianje along. But I stand ever ready. Gotta bring, gotta bring our best boy. All right, so let's go ahead and register for the duty. This episode's probably gonna be a little bit longer, but that's okay. Last dungeon. Deep in the heart of Labyrinthos lies the secrets among secrets, the device through which the Charlings have peered into the ethereal sea to learn Heidelin secrets. With their bargain with the form fulfilled, the Silence of the Seven Dawn are poised to journey to the Atioscope and beyond to beg her aid, but no depths are without their darkness. All right. The uh, Aetoscope. This place looks absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so this is the first boss. Or not. We're still, at the fir We're still not at the first boss. Oh, the first boss is going to be down there. I see. Is this a good memory? Wait. Who's that supposed to be? I feel like I should know who this is, but my memory's failing me right now. He is um, bulky. He's not even the first boss yet. I feel like I've been. You are at me. Okay. Oh, In a rush of familiar wisdom. Wait. Who's helping us? Who was helping us there? It said it did say a scion. I'm not sure who. But I like how this this dungeon is basically gonna be like throwback Thursday, the dungeon. Either way, let's get ready to fight our first boss, shall we? Alright, first major mechanic. Aglia climb? Oh I see. The, te the tentacles are glowing. I see. Oh, Olivia, this this is the person from uh, A Rome Reborn in uh, Not Praetorium. Um, it's, it's the one encounter that everybody just kind of sits around and, like, lazily waits. Lay a climb. Oh, you're starting to combine stuff together now. That's just foul. Allow me. Allow me. Allow me. Uh, 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 bra, you good? He said, allow me, allow me, allow me. Okay, okay, I'll allow you, goodness. Nicely done. All right, so Nebula's about to time out, so that means I throw on camouflage. How's Singing and Desire gonna go and run and do all that? Did not appreciate that at all. Oh. Oh yeah, and everybody's commenting on who it's supposed to be. I see. They said the aether's too deep and I'm losing you. You aren't losing me. Alright, so who's gonna be this next person? It's gotta be someone that I know. But I, I do love the touch. Who are you? It's so hard to remember some of these names. Oh, they are still standing here, so I do not understand. Oh, I see. You had to wait for the one who, that was timing out. I see. Trap no shell. Okay. Oh. Okay. This, I was about to say. These bosses have not been, like, too bad, thankfully. But who hates us the most of all is what I'm wondering. Okay. We're okay. No, we aren't. Yes, we are. No, we aren't. Yes, we are. No, we aren't. Yes, we are, kind of. No, we aren't. <laughs> okay, okay. I think for real this time we're good. Don't you just love that back and forth of, 
We're good. We're not. We're good. We're not. Yeah, I was not going to risk all that. Benfilia! How are you doing? Wait, where'd you go? Bro, you can't, you can't, you can't just tease us like that. Oh, okay. What are, I'll say, where did all that damage suddenly just come in from? I just saw, I just looked over. Luckily, I have that little visual of a health bar underneath my uh, head, but goodness. I don't know the vo the voice doesn't sound familiar to me. And obviously these uh manifestations are all is as far as you go. Fan Daniel? Yeah, it is Fan Daniel. Or Amon, I guess. I just remember that Fan Daniel had that look for a bit. Um, what's that doing? Oh, I'm glad that I was not in the way of that. Curtain call. Um, I don't entirely know what's happening. Oh, hi. Shiva. Save me, queen. Okay, that was not how I wanted you to save me. Alright, eruption force. Thank you, Alize, for committing to that, even though it nearly killed you. Okay. GG. So we didn't actually destroy that memory, mind you. It just kind of flew away. Hey guys, how, how's it going? How was the, the how was the trek through the dungeon? Even though Cryo lost the connection with us. Okay. So as always, guys, that's gonna be it for this episode. Next time, we are gonna be ending um, formally finishing the dungeon, right? So, if you guys have not already. Keep the description. That's going to have all my social media and all my other types of stuff along that length. And that's it for me. So I'll see you guys all in the next one.